Welcome back to Tim and Sid. I am Tim. That is Sid. Uh, still to come, plenty of talk from the NBA Finals. Game number one goes tonight on Sportsnet, but obviously we are talking about game two from the Stanley Cup Final. Elliot Friedman has worked so hard, Tim. Mm -hmm. Elliot Friedman, night in, night out, just bringing the heat mm -hmm. consistently on Sportsnet and CBC and is lying in a creepy way on his hotel room bed. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us via FaceTime. Hey, Fridge, what are you thinking? I'm thinking I made a big mistake agreeing to come on today. That's, well, that's, that's correct. That's normally the case. That is correct. No matter if you're in your bed in your hotel room or not. That is correct. <laughs> um, all right, Fridge. so the numbers say Nashville's in a lot of trouble here. Yeah. Why aren't they in trouble? Go the other way on it. You know, I, I got to tell you, the, the, the number that says they're in trouble is 0-2, and that's what they're down in the series. But they've played pretty well. I mean, uh, they've been the better team most of these two games. I mean, everybody knows that Pekka Rene went an hour and 45 minutes without touching the puck in game one. And there was a pretty long stretch in game two where Pittsburgh had no shot again um, you know I think what the Penguins have done this playoffs they've been outshot quite heavily but they've proven if you give them a chance uh, they're going to kill you they faced four really good goalies now they made Bobrovsky look bad they made Holtby look bad Anderson is the only one whose numbers were better against the Penguins than they were in the regular season or in the playoffs um, but you know now they're making Rene look bad and he was having one of the best playoff seasons anyone's ever had they have elite shooters and they make people look bad I mean I understand why the Predators are sitting there and saying we're still in this because the two games have been very even but if you don't get goaltending you don't have a chance and right now the Nashville's not getting goaltending so the the obvious question is who do you think uh, is going to start in game three but I want to throw just one at you before we get there do you yep. think the Preds were thinking of turning away from Pekka Rene before he went on this run in these playoffs? I, I don't know. I mean, um, do I think so? No. I mean, Soros, the backup, is a good goalie, and I know there are teams who've asked Nashville if they will consider trading him, but he's still a bit of an unproven commodity. And also the other thing, too, is Soros, and I've seen him, he's not a big guy. And if you take a look at goaltending in the NHL right now, there's a lot of teams that get very nervous about little guys being goalies. Um, you know, I, I think the other thing, too, is, you know, Rene carries a big number. I'd be curious what they'd have to do to move on from him. It's not always easy. But I, I think these playoffs have proven that he, there's still a lot of good uh, in his game. Why is Matt Murray so good? You know, I think there's a couple of reasons. One, he's naturally great. He's a really good goalie. Second, I just think the guy's really calm. Um, you know, it, where we sit in our we have a uh, our set is in a suite in Pittsburgh, and it's uh, for periods one and three. It's it's basically right over top of where Matt Murray plays goal, and the, you can see there's like almost no wasted movement. He always seems very relaxed, very patient. Um, you know, some goalies look really frazzled or panicked when they make saves. He doesn't. Um, I, you know, he's a big, tall, thin guy, obviously with great reflexes, really smart, and he's got unbelievable movement. I mean, uh, I know what bad movement looks like because that's me, and I, <laughs> and I just can't believe how, how calm and relaxed and easily, uh, you know, getting across the net and around players comes to him. This is a guy who's really talented and also very technically sound. There's no wasted movement yeah. with this guy. Yeah, every great athlete has that efficiency of movement. I, I you, listen. Yeah. Yesterday you mentioned uh, the idea of a Smith, uh, split con Smythe award yeah. presentation that maybe Matt Murray and Mark Andre Fleury, if the Pens win, could split the award. Uh, I know you asked CJ Chris Johnston if, if it could happen, but what was the reaction outside of the guys sitting beside you on the panel? Like, were people just crushing you, or were they open to the idea? Well, there were some people who really disagreed with it. I mean, the guy who crushed me most is the guy who sits two seats over, Nick. He was yeah. just killing me with this idea. He goes, how can you put somebody in there? I didn't even play in the final. Uh, that was his reaction about Flurry. They wouldn't have gotten you know, there without him. Yeah, you know, exactly. And, I mean, if you take a look at it, I mean, you you could pick Gensel. I mean, you know, Gensel was almost a game one scratch in this series, which, yeah. you know, and he's really talented. 
Um, you, you could always pick Malkin. I think he's got 26 points now, and you can always pick Crosby. Yep. But you know, the reason I thought about it is, you know, in these two games, Murray's been the difference. And at the end of the Ottawa series, he made a huge difference. But, you know, I remember that that Columbus series, the ice was tilted and he beat them. And, you know, the other thing, too, is in Washington game seven, he beat them. Uh, you know, I, I just look at them. And if you go back to last year and I did this the other night of all the if you believe in shots as, a, as an effective measure of possession last year, Pittsburgh had the second best shot differential of any team in the playoffs. Only Dallas, who played 11 fewer games, was better this year. They're the worst. They've been outshot by I think now it's about 130 shots in the playoffs. So that says to me that their goaltenders are constantly under pressure. Maybe not all the scoring chances are great, but they're good. They're constantly under pressure. Um, and Pittsburgh shooting uh, over 11%. And it's a chance to be the best shooting percentage by a champion since 1997 when they really started taking track of this stuff. Yeah. So it says to me that they're a counter-strike, quick-strike team. And that's, you know, I, I recovered that 2001 World Series for our old employer when Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling were World Series co-MVPs. And that's what came to me. It's that, you know, the, the goaltending position is the reason Pittsburgh's here. And it would be different. It's never happened in hockey. But that doesn't mean it can't happen this time. Uh, the idea of us having uh, all of our guests on by FaceTime, if we can get them, is that Sometimes it's hard to drive to a studio. Sometimes it's hard to get a it's guy. It's helpful, helpful for the guests. It's, it's just helpful, helpful for the guests because yeah. he's got a busy day. Uh, Adam wrote in and said, Elliot, is Elliot lying down? I'm in a bar, and that horrible hostage video is on about a dozen screens. What is happening? So for those without <laughs> sound, can you just smile and say that you're okay? Yeah. I'm, I'm fine, but I am lying down. Yes. Do you have a newspaper from today you can show us to make sure you're okay? No, nothing available? That's Here, fine. Make, make a green choice. There, there, you, go. there hey, you go. Hang your towels up, Fridge. There hang you your go. towels make up. Make a green choice just in time for America to leave the Paris Accord. Fridge, <laughs> thank you very much. Have a good one, man. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Take care. Bye. See you. The extremely relaxed Elliot Friedman for Pillow Talk. By the way, that, that, that green initiative uh, from the hotel often just saves them a lot of money, right? You, you told me it's about the business? <laughs> yeah, it might. It might, maybe, be maybe a, a little bit. Might be a smidgen about the business. Maybe.